All right, welcome to Meeting of the Minds. Uh, we got Dan here. Um, Dan, thanks for joining me today. Uh, to start us off, give us just like a quick, you know, elevator pitch on on you and your background and the the program that you're uh, you're coaching. Yeah, first of all, Jake, thanks for having me on. And uh, yeah, I mean, I've been playing soccer my whole life. Been fortunate to uh, have some great coaches and got to play um, college soccer, and then started my coaching actually when I was uh, in college over the summers. So started coaching at clubs as, um, as just a um, trainer for, you know, some of the bigger clubs in the area. Um, had a couple sisters that played soccer that were younger than me and my dad was, was coaching them. So I would help train them over the summers as well. So started coaching at a very young age and then started getting my, some of my coaching licenses and then just kind of kept going up the ranks and and then now I've been a head coach at Central Methodist uh, for this will be my 13th year. Oh wow 13 years that's a, a pretty good yeah. tenure um you know in that time what are some of the changes that you've been able to implement in the program that have you know helped lead to, to success? Yeah I mean I think uh you know when I first uh, started we were at the bottom of the of the conference um we were you know, not viewed as a, a very competitive team or a, you know, real serious program. Um, and then, uh, you know, just you kind of have your, when you get hired, you got a uh, kind of, uh, you know, a blueprint um, of what you want to, to do and how you're going to, how you're going to go about it. And it's very similar to kind of building a house. So, you know, it, there, you do have to have the foundation set. And, you know, I spent a lot of time in the first couple of years of just trying to set the, the foundation, get the culture right, get the environment right. Um, you know, spent a lot of time recruiting for the first, uh, you know, couple of months that I had the job trying to just get uh, some top players, maybe that were uncommitted at the time and, and really just kind of not necessarily for that upcoming class, but two, three years down the road, kind of starting to get the, uh, recruiting to, to match up because you know if you're not recruiting two or three years out it's it's very challenging so I think you got to get your priorities straight from the beginning and, and kind of figure out how you're going to go about changing the culture changing the environment and you know ultimately that will lead to to winning and and, and having success so um, that, that's kind of how I got started all right very cool um, so you know talk about like culture and you know building a, a winning program you know, obviously we focus on the mental side of sports um you know what what kind of mental components do you think teams that are successful have that teams that maybe struggle don't yeah i mean i think it's got to be embedded in your culture to be honest and i think it's something you got to train and teach um you know it's very similar to you know your mind is very similar to a, to a muscle that you gotta train you know and i think uh I think it's funny because you're, you hear coaches say the game is 90% mental, 10%, you know, physical, and everybody's focusing on coaching the 10% and they're not coaching the, the 90%. So I think you got to understand that it is a, a very important uh, piece and tool um, that you do have to train. And I think it's, you know, you, it's something that you got to start with. And I think your players appreciate it as you continue to to grow the way they think and kind of change the way they think and the way they approach things so um i think it's absolutely critical and um you learn that as you you go through you know that wasn't the first thing i thought about when i got hired was it wasn't about you know the mental component you know for me but it was something that you know we we developed along the way so um, you learn and you see how your players respond to situations and handle certain moments. And, you know, you look back and you say, what am I not doing that maybe I should be doing? And, and I think that's one. I think the mental component is something that, that gets left, left out of a lot of coaching environments. Yeah, well, I've, I've always noticed it. It seems like coaches know it's important. They see it's important. But a lot of them feel like players should have it just coming in. Like it should be an automatic, mm -hmm. right? Like, well, you yep. should just be confident. Um, yep. And, you know, I've always, as a coach, and you know, as an educator in the past, I've always tried to focus on, it's not about saying where they should be. It's about coaching them where they're at and where you need them to be in order to be able to have that success. You know, so for, so for your guys' program, what, what are some of the, um, 
ways that you try to train them mentally? Is that more of an in-house process or have you brought people in or? Yeah, right now it's all in-house and honestly it's, it's, it's myself and my coaches really trying to research and, and gain the, the knowledge of how to, to implement it into your environment. Right. And uh, you know, cause it's a tough thing and you, you can do it wrong, I think too, you know, and, and uh, you know, but we try to, we try to do it on the field train it but then we try to train it you know in the classroom setting too and, and off the field as well i think it's something that you can train in many different ways we haven't brought somebody in yet but that would be something that i would definitely be very uh highly consider doing in the in the future um, but i mean i've read a lot of books um you know i've 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 watched things that you put on um you know i think you gotta as a coach i think you gotta be learning all the time and I think it's about, you know, trying to steal ideas and make them your own, right? You see something and it might not work for your program. So you might not be able to use that, but maybe it triggers to another idea that you get and, and then you can use that for your program. So it's all kind of stealing ideas and, and really trying to make it your own. And, you know, the, the world can be your library if you want it to be and you want to learn. You know, there's, there's ways nowadays to really be able to, to expand your knowledge as a coach and, and not just on the X's and O's, but on you know, the, the mindset, the mental, the mental training, the mental component. Yeah, no, for sure. And I, I've heard it. I heard a coach put it well recently. He talked about, you know, he tried to coach, you know, like somebody making a tapestry and like, you know, for him, he's like, I only have certain colors of thread that I know well. And so if I'm going to make a beautiful tapestry or, or have a successful tapestry, I need to bring in knowledge from other people. Mm -hmm. and I thought that yeah. was the interesting way to, to talk about taking a bunch of different approaches and kind of blending them together. Yeah, um, absolutely. So, so, so right now, obviously, is is probably as mentally straining as anything for athletes, you know, for students, for people across the country. I mean, it's it's a difficult time, um, you know, with stay at home orders and with a bunch of businesses shut down and um, a lot of athletes not able to train like they normally um, would. Right. What are you doing right now with your team that uh, you, you're? doing to help them continue to improve and like what what do you think other coaches you know that are are looking for ways to help their teams improve what would you recommend during this time yeah i mean i think it's i, I do think it's challenging for sure and i think uh you know it's a lot of it is how, how i think too you know so it's kind of a negative thing for the for the world but then i think if you can take a positive you know kind of approach to it and say well you know, here's here's things that we can do now that maybe we weren't doing before. So, you know, for us, I mean, we've been on Zoom calls every other Sunday um, with our team. And, and I think now is a great time to try to build relationships with your new kids and your returners. Um, so trying to mesh them together. And, you know, before we wouldn't have used Zoom because, uh, you know, you're you're training, you're you're having your spring season. The girls are playing high school soccer. Everything's, you know, they're playing games every, every every other day, it feels like, at the high school level. So everybody's got chaos going on. And now with this, you know, with this virus, it's kind of put everything on hold. So now you're able to assess and look and say, okay, well, what can we do? Because we have to do something. So how can we continue to try to improve our team? So, so that's what we've done is Zoom calls. I think I know a lot of coaches are doing that. I think uh, – you know, what you do in the Zoom call is obviously up to the coach and what you need, but we're trying to build relationships. We're trying to get uh, people to, to know each other a little bit more, trying to do some mental training, um, you know, a little bit of motivation, um, some tactical awareness training sessions. Um, you know, so we're, we're doing all kinds of things, making them watch games to where then they have to, to break it down and, and pick different, uh, different moments from a, a certain tactical, you know, component that we gave them um and, and it gives players opportunities to watch professional games because coaching the women you know a lot of girls don't watch the professional game so now is an opportunity okay here's what you guys are going to do here's your assignment we're going to put you in groups and now you can go to work on it and uh, and they have to watch the game and um you know even if somebody doesn't watch a full game they're watching more than what they they normally would so so i think there's definitely ways to continue to to move forward um you know, we're preparing like we're having a full season and, and that, uh, you know, like the virus doesn't even, uh, you know, appear. And, and we're trying to 
you know, get everybody ready for our, uh, you know, preseason in August and, and try to get everybody mentally ready. And I think also, you know, I think it's good pause because it also gives you time to, to be with your family and, and realize and appreciate, you know, maybe when life slows down, you can look and say, Hey, here's my family. Here's what I love. I can spend time. You know, I got a four year old that I'm able to spend a little bit more time with. And, uh, when we were working from home, doesn't mean that I work any, any less, but, uh, you know, at least it allows you to interact and have your kids be maybe a little bit more of a part of everything. You know, I have two stepkids that enjoy, you know, doing some different projects that I do with our team and, and different mental training. So, you know, there, there's ways to incorporate your family and have them be a part of it too, I think. And, um, you know, so there's, there's definitely ways to continue. We're doing our summer workout program where it, yes, it's been modified because you can't maybe get into gyms, but you know, body weights, exercises are just as good strengthening your core you know there's plenty of things we can do and now hopefully everybody can at least run outside and most things have been lifted now with those type of restrictions but you know so we're, we're kind of still going along with the similar approach to be honest that we normally would yeah no and you know talking about finding the positives in every situation we try to focus with all the teams and individuals we work with on gratitude a lot um mm-hmm. You know, because gratitude is one of those pieces that if you look at a lot of the top teams, a lot of the top players, you know, it's being grateful for whatever opportunity arises, you know, and, and when things get tough, you know, being able to be positive and being able to be great, uh, gr- have, have that gratitude, I think are really tight. Um, you know, because if you can't appreciate it when things are going, uh, when things are going right, you know, it's really hard to appreciate things when they're going wrong. And you know, that ability to, to, to be thankful every day is teaching you how to look for the bright side of, of any situation, which is the exact what you need of, Oh, we just gave up a goal. We got 10 minutes left. We got to, we got to tie this thing up and at least put it in overtime. And, you know, that ability to find something to be grateful for in the midst of, you know, the tragic situation that we're in, I think is a really strong component of, of having a strong mindset. Right. I want to jump back a little bit. You were talking about having them watch film. You know, which film is something I, a lot of coaches talk about, a lot of athletes talk about. Um, I think a lot of people go into it without directing their attention to certain aspects. You know, they think just watching it is going to be enough. Mm-hmm. Um, and I have found it's, it's just like going to a practice. A well-honed practice plan is going to give you more benefit than just being there for a long time. Yeah. So for, for anybody that's trying to do more film study right now, what are some recommendations you would make to help make that as beneficial as possible. Yeah. I mean, I think uh, player engagement is very important. I think uh, having a clear topic in mind and trying to stay just to that topic, I think is very important. Um, I think cell phones can be a major distraction. So we have our girls turn off their cell phones, um, turn them face down to where if a message comes through, they don't see it until after the film. Um, Try to put them in, blocks of where they play so maybe the keepers are together the defenders are together the midfielders the the strikers um and and try to make it as interacting as as possible and i think not just pointing out bad things too i think it's important to watch film on on when you do things well and and you know we i don't think you can go in with the approach of we got to fix everything in one film session so Film sessions are a part of our our culture, our environment, where the girls already know we're going to have film sessions probably twice a week on average. And, um, you know, we, we try not to keep them more than 30 minutes. Um, but I think you got to have a clear direction of what you want to get out of the, the film session. My coaches and I go through the film beforehand. So that way, if, uh, you know, if we need to, change something or you know look for something a little bit different we we have more than just my ideas you know it's it's collectively you know thought about throughout the staff so um you know i think you have to get your coaches involved i think you got to have different voices speaking so sometimes it's not always me talking sometimes it might be a player coming up to explain something or another coach going through it um it's easy as a head coach to want to try to fix everything, but it's, it's not going to happen in one, one setting. So I think you got to be patient and, and, and kind of just get into a routine to where you're constantly watching and the players can 
you know, kind of see. And, um, you know, then we try to, we have it on huddle. That's our platform we use. So we give girls access to huddle so they can kind of go in beforehand and watch, you know, maybe we give them a topic of what we're going to be talking about so they can kind of start to kind of formulate their own ideas as well going into the meeting. So, um, you know, try, trying to get as much player involvement, I think is, is critical. Yeah, no, for sure. You talked a little bit about, um, you know, not focusing only on mistakes, but also on the positive side of things. You know, I, I, I find a lot of players that struggle um, get too honed in on, on mistakes and like mm-hmm. too hard on themselves when it comes, which doesn't mean that we don't want them to improve or get better or that mistakes are like, you know, okay. Mm-hmm. More so, you know, we try to go into it with the approach of mistakes are going to happen. They happen mm-hmm. to the best players. They happen to the young players. So rather than try to avoid, you just got to use it as a, a, a lesson. So for you as a coach, is that a concept that you focus a lot on? And if so, like, you know, what are some of your ways to try to make that more explicit with the team? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, you know, the players know this, um, but, you know, we, we create failure in our training environment. And you can do that by obviously the, you know, limiting touches or field space, um, you know, more defenders, what, whatever it may be, but something to where they're constantly, you know, having to overcome failures, right? Because that's the game. You're going to make a lot of mistakes Mm -hmm. and, you know, being able to overcome that. And I think, you know, people, when you hear the word failure or fail, everybody thinks it's such a negative, right? Um, And, you know, one thing is, and I heard this a little bit ago, and I can't remember from who, but, you know, if you look at the word fail and you look at it as first attempt and learning, Mm -hmm. That uh, that kind of changes the way you approach things. Right. And if you can kind of change the way you're thinking about things, the things that you're thinking about will change. So if you're able to take it and look at it as, okay, what do we do after we make mistakes? You know, and what's our reactions to it? You know, how are we going to respond? Do we throw our hands up in the air? Do we put our heads down or do we immediately try to get the ball back and and start again? So, uh, um, you know, that's something we try to. Um, teach our players that it's it's part of sports you know you're all playing a game of soccer that is very hard to play and and you're going to make a lot of mistakes so you have to accept that going into it Um, it's not something that yeah we're not trying to make mistakes but you know mistakes are going to happen and and it's how we respond so I think that response is what you got to try to teach players and and then when you carry it over to film it's not like it's such a you know we don't want fail to be such a negative term in our environment um, because everybody's definition of failure is different, right? Mm. Um, and you create what you think failure is. So um, I think Kobe Bryant said it really good. Um, you know, what is failure? Does failure truly exist? Um, you know, you create it in your mind that it, it does. And I think as long as you're constantly learning from your mistakes, you're, you're fixing the problems and you're not going to keep making the same mistakes, right? So if you keep learning then I don't think you're failing. I think you're, you're improving as a player. So, um, you know, and, and another thing we tell our players is, you know, failure is a um, biological requirement for greatness. So if you want to be great, you're going to have to fail and you're going to have to overcome things. And, and I think, uh, you know, showing players, you know, sometimes when we watch film, we're not watching film of us ourselves. Maybe we're watching film of our, you know, of a professional team. And, mm-hmm. and, and hey, here's them trying to do this. Well, they didn't do it right either here in this moment what could they have done different or you know watching you know top level athletes even from a different sport watching them fail and you know you can constantly learn from those things so um so we try not to look at as failure as a negative in our environment and you know it's it's hard to change that because players coming in they they everybody thinks of failure being such a negative thing so you know freshmen or transfers coming into our program it's teaching them and showing them here's how we're going to do things and and here's how we're going to move forward after mistakes. And, you know, we're not going to get down and we're not going to point fingers at people. Um, you know, we're going to, we're going to react accordingly. So. Yeah, no, I, I, I learned probably more from my losses than I probably mm-hmm. my wins. I, often I think that wins can hide mistakes and really bad habits. And it's why it's, it's important to find an, a way to challenge yourself. And mm-hmm. you, I always try to indicate to any athlete of any sport, really, if you're in a league where you're, dominating and like you're not being challenged you're in the wrong spot Mm -hmm. 
maybe you're having success, but like you're not going to really grow as much as possible, which the name of this, the game is growth and improvement. You got to keep growing every single, every single day. Time is too short to let ourselves continue to improve. Um, you know, the other, the, the quote I've, I, I got from Mike Moore, one of our other mindset um, coaches who's exceptional, you know, he described it as, you know, the wind will blow out a candle, but it makes a bonfire burn hotter. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, and like we got to be able to look at losses or mistakes like that and use it as, as more fuel than as something that extinguishes our, our passion and our drive. So I think that is really significant. Um, yeah. well, sorry about that. Talking about those cell phones. I've been turning my phone off. <laughs> nah, nah, it happens. All right. Well, uh, as far as, uh, you know, to kind of finish up here, what do you think are some of the main mistakes uh, or mental mistakes that athletes make that really hinder their growth and their progress as athletes? And there's, a, you know, multitude. There's no one right answer on this, obviously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But in your mind, what are some of the, the commonalities that you see with players that don't make it? Um, when it comes to the mental side of sports, yeah, I mean, I think uh, definitely their 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 approach and their mindsets. I think uh, you know maybe their feel their fear to to fail. I think also, you know, for players to be great, I think they have to get out of their comfort zone and stretch themselves, right? And and I think it's so easy for people that you know they don't set their goals. I don't think high enough. They just kind of you know, okay, well, that's a big challenge and I might fail. And, you know, I, I don't want to be viewed as a failure. I don't want to, you know, people play not to, to lose versus play to win. You know, they're, they're so kind of caught up in just not making any mistakes and playing a perfect game versus just going out and seeing what happens. And I think, uh, you know, really trying to get out of your comfort zone and, and stretch your limits and, and really challenge yourself. And, 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 and I think, uh, you know, learning how to compete and, and, you know, knowing that it's okay to, to be competitive against somebody and still be their friend, you know, because you're just going to push them and make them better. So I think getting out of their comfort zone really, you know, kind of covers a lot of things because, you know, if you get out of that comfort zone and you're not afraid to take risk and, you know, soccer is all about taking risk and, you know, picking the right moments and, you know, like it's uh you know, we're, we're a very possession based team and we like to build out of the back. And, you know, some coaches will be like, oh, man, you're taking so many risks trying to build out of the back. It's like, well, you're taking maybe even more risks by trying to play a direct ball that now your team gets stretched and they, you lose the first ball. And now they're tacking right down the middle of the field on you, you know. And uh, so there's always kind of pros and cons to whatever your approach is. But I think people got to be able to kind of stretch themselves more and and not just look at the outcome but look at the, the growth and we talk about striving for growth in our program and trying to get better every day. And, and I think, uh, I think another big mistake too is players don't get enough sleep. I think mm. players don't eat properly. And I think all that stuff kind of, you know, it all affects your game and you got to, we talk about bringing enough energy every single day to do the job um, and whatever it takes. So I think the way they approach things has to change I think their the way they compete has to to change. I think the way they approach failure and their mindset of, you know, failure being a negative thing, um, and, and really just trying to stretch themselves to to grow and be better, take yeah. risk. No, for so. sure. Yeah, I mean, and it's interesting looking at sports and seeing what gets emphasized and improved over time. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the last few decades, I think strength training has like totally mm-hmm. been. I think nutrition has really gone through that. Like right now I see as a time, you know, at least with our efforts, we're really focused on the mental side of sports, which, you know, we've worked with a lot of teams and individuals who have never had really an opportunity to have like, you know, direct mental coaching. Um, And, you know, I think that's one of the areas that we're going to continue to improve in and see more, you know, sports across the board and athletes across the board focus on that mental aspect. The other physical one is I think stretching. I think there's a lot of people that don't put enough emphasis on the importance of being flexible, one for recovery and two for injury prevention. I think those are the mindset and I think uh, the flexibility and stretching aspects are two that need to be re-looked at by a lot of players. But it's a lot of those small things, right? It's, you know, if you look at the best, 
what separates them from the people just below them is like such a, a it's just a hair's breadth of difference yep. many times. And those little differences um, in, you know, sleep and nutrition, mm -hmm. and, you know, some, some daily mental training, some daily stretching, you know, can make a huge difference over the long term. Um, I would agree entirely. Well, uh, Dan, I really appreciate you joining us today. Uh, thank you for your time. And uh, do you have any last questions for me before we uh, finish up here? No, I really appreciate you reaching out. And it's been a pleasure being on your, your show here. And, uh, you know, you guys are doing great things. And I appreciate uh, what you guys are doing for the game and just not just soccer, but just sports in general, because it's such a, you know, sports are such a great platform for teaching life lessons. So I think, uh, you know, you guys are doing great things and, and keep up the great work. All right. Well, thanks, Dan. Uh, you guys have a good week. Thanks. You too. Stay safe. Of course. Bye now. See you.